Hello there friends, it's Emma here, the Bookish Princess, and I am joined by the lovely Kate Howe. We've been having such a wonderful, cozy fall day. We just filmed a video about our favorite families in literature, so that'll be on Kate's channel. Look forward to that. Um, and I also have, um, we also have some vlog clips. We've been making terrariums and wardian yes. cases for Victober and just having a lovely fallish time. So we thought it would only be appropriate to film the cozy autumn book tag. I'll make sure I link the original um, tag creator down in the comments, but this just seemed like a fun list of very seasonal questions. Yes. Um, and we have not compared answers yet, so it'll be fun to hear. Question number one is book that reminds you of autumn. Do you wanna go first? Uh, sure, so I have a few. <laughs> So I am one of the hosts of a readathon in October called Victober, which is just celebrating Victorian literature. So now um, autumn and Victorian literature are very inextricably linked to me, and but particularly the ones with a lot of atmosphere and kind of mysterious elements to them. And so one of those that comes to mind is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Um, and it is, what I love is it has, uh, it's narrated in first person, but by different characters. And so I feel like that keeps it pacey, even though it is a lengthy book, it doesn't really feel long. And then another one is Aurora Floyd by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, uh, where a young lady kind of has a romance with a family chauffeur. And so her family's like off to boarding, <laughs> off to boarding school with you. And, um, then she disappears and comes back home and you don't know where she was in that time. But it's very autumnal feeling, lots of descriptions of the fall um, setting and then there ends up being a big mystery separate than that and it's just very, very good. And then on a cozier note is Christy by Catherine Marshall. Have you read Christy? No. This is such an Emma type book. You would really enjoy it. And it's all about Christy Huddleston who is this inexperienced young woman who decides she's going to take on this really challenging task of teaching in the Appalachian Mountains. And um, she is, yes, yeah, she's just very young, but she wants to make a difference in the world. And she wants to understand uh, people that are very different from kind of the upbringing that she had. And it's just so full of heart and it has some hard things in there but um, I love the thread of faith that is there throughout the whole book and it's a really special book. And so I think because uh, of it being a sort of school time book, it feels perfect for autumn. So I always think of Lord of the Rings because um, the Fellowship of the Ring, the first book in the series, uh, of course, basically starts on September 22nd, which is the birthday of Frodo and Bilbo Baggins. Um, so it's kind of like Hobbit Day. Uh, yes. And this year, I think it was Hobbit Day and the first day of fall were the same same day. You're um, right. So it was fun to see people's posts on social media. But just like the way they describe the, the seasons, because um, this is kind of seasonal. It starts on September 22nd, even though we're in Middle Earth, so it's not on our Earth, but Tolkien was very uh, faithful uh, Catholic, and so like the Christmas and Easter are yeah. like two kind of critical times, and like even though it's not like obviously literally in there, like if you research it, like it, it's obviously kind of nodded to, which is fun. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. So kind of some liturgical, a little bit, you know, like sacramental kind of. Yeah. You know, if you if you dig under if it, you dig. The, the surface. But um, yeah, we get to hear like a lot of the fellowship is like this fall journey to because that starts in September um, and then ends at Christmas, getting to Rivendell, um, and that's just such a memorable part of the series. And then this doesn't take place in fall, but Lothlorien, the beautiful forest, um, mm. uh, is like the Malorn trees have these like famous golden leaves. And so whenever I see the, the trees um, turning gold this time of year, I always think of Lothlorien. Um, and this beautiful um, set, like, that you've, whoever make, chose these colors was like, Lord of the Rings is a fall series. <laughs> like, it's just such a perfect fall tone. So our second question is, favorite autumnal book cover? Uh, well, I thought of two. And uh, one is All Things Wise and Wonderful. And is it is it Pan McMillan that have done these? Yes. Um, I'm trying so, to think where my copy is. Because I, well, I don't have that one, though. I only have the first one. They're yes. so stunning, though. I'll put a picture on the screen of the way yes. they go from season to season. And it's like one big painting. It's so beautiful because there's five books 
all, to, all together, or now they've bound them up as five. Um, and it's, the first one starts out in spring and then gradually transitions throughout the course of the paintings covering the books uh, to winter end. Yeah, so all things uh, wise and wonderful is the autumn one. And then I brought with me, I love this edition of Jane Eyre. Um, and it's got the gold foiling and I just think these cover uh, these colors the natural tones um, Really feel like it. The one downside is these pages are very like like magazine kind of uh -huh. so for annotating for those who like to annotate books It's more just like pretty yeah uh, to look at but I do I love how it looks my pick is Anne of the Island by Ella Montgomery, which I don't think that the whole thing of this takes place in autumn, yes. but um, it, they also have seasonal covers um, on these Virgo Modern Classics paperbacks, and they're just so lovely, this one with like the trees. And I, I love how, like like with all the creatures great and small, it's like you have the spring one, and the fall one, and the winter one, yes. <laughs> like, with, um, and there's Anne of... I'm trying to read the cover <laughs> spy name. I think it's Windy Willows that's like cherry blossoms. It's just really fun the way they they picked such a beautiful evocative seasonal picture. Now we're branching out beyond books. Number three, uh, the question is, what is your favorite autumnal drink to read with? I mean, I do love hot chocolate. I know people think of that as more winter, but as soon as it starts to cool down, I'm I'm ready for hot chocolate. <laughs> that is delicious. Have you ever had, we don't really have them in the Northeast much, but caribou coffee? No. They like, are, have like next level hot chocolate. Like they, it puts Ooh. Starbucks hot chocolate to shame because it's like, I'm pretty sure it's actual little chocolate shavings melted. Oh. And they have a dark chocolate and a milk chocolate. Yeah, my cousin Becky is always like, she doesn't like coffee, and yet she's always referencing that she stopped at Caribou, and so I was like, what's <laughs> going on? And she's like, oh yeah, it's the, it's the hot chocolate. Oh, 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 that sounds lovely. Very decadent hot yes. cocoa. Um, for me, I'm really basic. I have to go with Starbucks pumpkin spice latte. It's just like... Those are really delicious. And, and they're so seasonal. When I get my first one, I'm like, now I know fall is on the way, yes. like it's almost here. Question four is, do you like to read early or late? Early in the morning or late in the evening? I don't think I have necessarily a time of day I like to read. I do know I always, in theory, want to read before bed, but I usually get really sleepy. But I do love, when I want to be very luxurious, I love having a book bath. So I love lighting a ton of candles and putting on nice music or an ASMR room um, and having some kind of tea or you know hot chocolate with it and that feels very luxurious. So I wish I could say early. I, I don't like to stay up too late. Like I want yeah. to get myself and to stay on an early, which I, I'm on a fairly early schedule. Um, so like that would be fun if I could say yes, I wake <laughs> up early and read. The problem is I wake up early and I try to be productive. Like and yeah. I don't really want to sit down and read first thing in the morning because I'm like trying to. You and know, then it's hard to pull yourself away from it. Yeah. I find if I actually, I'll pick like a very challenging classic and so that it will be easy to pull myself away <laughs> from. So I've been very slowly reading through The Fairy Queen, um, which it's very dense. And so I'm taking, you know, six <laughs> months to read it. And so that I like, it's like, I feel like I had my like vitamins for the day. <laughs> and then I move on to the more approachable reading. I like that. Yeah, I feel like I, I have like some fun childhood memories of like, you know, a summer where there was no school in the morning and so it didn't really matter when you went to bed and you just stay up and read yes. as long as you want. So I do feel like that's kind of fun when it's like, you don't need to get up and early so you just can read as long as you want. Yeah, it's nice to while a day away with reading when you can. <laughs> <laughs> so question number five is your favorite spooky read. Mm. Well, I think two came to mind. I like suspenseful reads more than spooky, but there are two spooky ones that I, I do really like. And the first is a short story by Amelia B. Edwards called The Phantom Coach. And it's about someone who, it's a Victorian short story, they're wandering late at night trying to get somewhere, and a coach comes and picks them up, and it ends up going on a very unexpected uh, twist. And, uh, it has a very unexpected uh, twist to it, and I just, I was so immersed in it and I had chills as I was reading it. Um, and then the other one, uh, pretty like dark and grittier than my usual reading, but that's The Secret House of Death by Ruth Rendell, um, where 
a neighbor begins to suspect something of their next door neighbor and slowly everything is unraveled and Dear. things are not all as they seemed and yes, just very gripping. Um, I feel like I've heard you talk about Ruth Randall before. Yes. I haven't heard of the first one though. I, I'll have to look that up. That sounds yeah. really good. Yeah, it's really good and it wouldn't take, I think you could read it in 45 minutes because it's a short story. My pick, so I had to The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. Washington Irving. Uh, yes. Suddenly I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to read that this month and I'm very excited because I've never read it. You know, that is a pretty quick one. I, I started this month reading uh, The Canterville Ghost, which Kate suggested and was actually, that's a pretty good, spooky, very humorous twist to it um, story. And I read it all in one day and I feel like The Legend of Sleepy Hollow you could probably sit down with and get through very it in cool. a day because it is pretty quick. Um, but it also has like some elements of humor and it's just a great, um, Great autumnal read and great like kind of suspenseful um, uh, read. And then the second one is also like sort of, it's like sweet and spooky. Not, I guess neither of these ones that I picked are like truly <laughs> frightening. See, I would think of the word spooky and think of things like that were kind of sweet. Like, yeah, you know, like Mickey's yeah. not so scary Halloween party. Like it's on the, on the, on the family friendly end of things, where it's like yes. thriller or suspenseful, that's like the, um, heavy hitting stuff. But yeah, this one is a children's book. It's called The Witch Family. I could not find my copy, unfortunately. Oh. Um, the new, it, I think it is in print still. The new cover is really ugly. <laughs> and the old cover is adorable. It's by Eleanor Estes, and it is about a witch family. It's very crotchety. So fun. Old witch, have you read it? I have, yes. It's so cute. It's and, very cute. And a little witch shows up, and the old witch doesn't really want the little witch to be there. <laughs> and there's this mysterious bumblebee, spelling bumblebee, who yes. like is always giving hints and warnings, but spelling them out letter by letter. It's just very fun, uh, very spooky, spooky read for this time yes. of year. Yeah, it has some whimsy to it. Um, have you read The Little Broomstick by Mary Stewart? No. I really want to read it. It's I've seen they made a beautiful kind of anime style movie called Mary and the Witch's Flower. Oh. And it's about a little girl who happens upon a broomstick and accidentally travels to a magical academy um, and goes on a, a wild adventure. And I, I have never read the Mary Stewart book of it though. That sounds so cute. Is it the yeah. same Mary Stewart who writes mysteries or different? Yes. Wow, is it yeah. adult or children? It's a children's book. I didn't know she wrote children's yes. books. Yeah, I've heard uh, uh, just a few people talk, speak about it, so what I want to find. That sounds perfect for um, for this time of year. Yes. So question number six is your ultimate comfort read. Well, I had to talk about Betsy Tacey, the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Lovelace. And I think part of it that's comforting is it's very nostalgic for me. Um, it's very reliable to pick up one of these, but it's also that I'm just incredibly fond of so many of the characters because you have Betsy and Tacy and Tib who are good friends, um, but then their whole friend circle and Betsy's family and Tacy's family and Tib's family. There's so much warmth in here and um, the Ray's maid, Anna, so many characters uh, just to love. And uh, I, I really love each book it takes place over the course of a year. Um, so just getting to spend time with these characters I find incredibly comforting. Yeah, they're all so sweet in that. And just so many like heartwarming moments from, from when yes. they're, they're little all the way up to when they're, you know, in high school. The everything soup is yes. one yes. I know why I'm thinking of, of all the food ones, like in the <laughs> onion sandwich. The, the, <gasps> Mr. Ray's every Sunday, Sunday? his Sunday lunches. Um, or it's, just, it's Sunday, I think he calls them Sunday lunches, but is it Sunday dinners? I think it might be, kind of later um, in the... Yeah, yeah, he makes onion sandwiches. You, which you wouldn't think would taste good, but he make they make it sound so good they that you do. want to have some. They do, and also that Betsy and Tacy every year at like the school variety show or whatever they do, the cat duet, the Rosini cat duet. Yes. Um, yeah, just very reliably comforting. So charming. So I, I was at war with myself as to whether or not it should be predictable or not because like Jane Austen and Elizabeth Gooch are like <laughs> two of my go-tos. They're always comfort reads, you know, they just, they're like familiar with the characters but also the writing style is like so deep and beautiful. And mm -hmm. um, But I thought I would um, try to go with just one book instead of so general. Um, and it was a book I reread this year, oh. The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. I remember loving it the first time but I've forgotten like how it's just a delicious book. Like delightful. Yes. There is some stress 
in the beginning, mm -hmm. but like, don't worry. Like, yes, <laughs> hang tight. Hang tight. It's all good. Because after that, it just gets better and better. And it is so much fun, such a delight. Like, really, the ultimate comfort read. Um, and lots of fun um, uh, stuff with the seasons. Because, of course, it takes place up in Canada. Doesn't it take place off of Prince Edward Island? Or maybe it takes place a little bit further up in the. Miss Dawes? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's not. It's definitely not Avonlea. Miss Dawes. Yeah. So well told. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful scenery and great characters. Definitely. It's very, um, just a very reliable. Another one that's reliable. Like you will be swept away by the story. And then we have an autumnal reading snack. Um. Well, this is a very decadent snack, <laughs> but I have discovered just how delicious. Dark chocolate sea salt caramels are, oh, they're so good. So I have to, I mean, I will just eat them and eat them and eat them. So they have to be an occasional treat because I just find them so irresistible. But yeah, that's, I feel like caramel seems autumnal. Yeah, for sure. One, I had kind of two, I like um, Reese's pumpkins. They're so good, but they're oh. kind of like caramels where it's like, I can only have one or so. And yes. <laughs> they're just so rich. And then also I like to make pumpkin scones. Um, Ooh. which are very nice. Having Kate brought some scones for our yes. tea party today, which is so much fun. And then number eight is your favorite autumnal candle to burn. Well, I am a big autumnal candle fan. <laughs> you know, when I saw this question, I was like, this will be perfect <laughs> that Kate's here. <laughs> um, and it's definitely Cider House by Yankee Candle. I love that it has some spice in there, so it feels you know like you're in a house where something is baking, and it has very, it's very heavy on the apple scent, and so it's bright and crisp at the same time, and it's just, it's the perfect candle. That sounds so lovely. See, me and candles, I feel like we're not. <laughs> I just have never been able to get into them. I think it's because, like, when I was growing up, whenever there was any candle lit, we were saying our Advent prayers. We'd like the Advent candle. Like, mm -hmm. but we didn't usually have them lit. So on the rare occasions, my mom would be like, watch it. Like, is ever is someone, you know, like, don't, you can't turn away from it. It might burn something down. And so, like, candles are supposed to be relaxing, right? <laughs> and now whenever I have one lit, at the back of my mind, I'm like, you cannot leave the room. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I've never been able to truly embrace the autumn candle uh, trend, but there was one that I almost bought at Target the other day, but I have a couple that I haven't uh, burned yet. So I'm like, you should actually use the ones you have. <laughs> but it was um, wild berries and mums. It was a really Ooh. lovely, like fruity, but fallish kind of scent. Um, and I had, it was actually a dish soap, mum scented dish soap. Wow. It was really nice. So I, I th that that was interesting. I don't feel like in the past I remember seeing mums as a scent. Yes. Uh, number nine is your favorite autumnal activity. I do like pumpkin picking. Um, I see, you know, on Instagram there are lots of templates and everyone talking about corn mazes and, you know, the outside of a corn maze. Do you know what the inside looks like? Just the same <laughs> as the outside. And then you're stuck in the corn maze. <laughs> And you have to figure out how to get out. It's not exciting. And you can go to a pumpkin patch and you just look at the cute pumpkins and you <laughs> pick a few out and you bring them home. So I, like I definitely, that. it's a low key autumnal activity. <laughs> I love to see the leaves. So I like to go for a fall walk or especially fall kayaking. Um, I like to take my kayak out. I'm not like a white water kind of person. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm more just like going around the lake or down the river. And it's always so beautiful to see like the, leaves reflected in the water and like they're mm. drifting down around you and then they're like floating on the surface and these like beautiful jewel tones. Um, so I always feel like fall is an especially magical time for, um, for kayak. And then the last question seemed almost uh, redundant. <laughs> it's your autumn fall reading list, which of course Kate hosts the wonderful Victober. I host Boutique Readathon and yes. um, so it, I feel like we've already spoken at length in other videos about our fall reading list. Yes. But do you have anything that's a highlight? I am very enamored with uh, The Three Brides by Charlotte Mary Young. So the same author who wrote The Heir of Redcliffe. Um, just, they're very sentimental and I love them for that. Just you're getting to spend day-to-day -day life with these characters. So it's nice making new book character friends. Yes. Yes, I'm definitely enjoying the air of Red Club. 
it, those Victorian books sometimes are so chunky. That it's a little bit, it's like, this is going to be an investment. <laughs> is this author going to be worth it? <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been uh, making good progress in the area of Redcliffe because I like the, like you say, it's just kind of a slice of life. Feels like you're sitting yes. down with these characters, really getting to know their families, and they're all just so interesting and well drawn. Well, that was super fun. Thanks. Lots of hopefully some cozy fall inspiration for you guys. We would love to hear about your favorite cozy habits and uh, traditions for, for the autumnal season. You'll have to leave them down in the comments below. And yeah. I should have said this at the beginning. I'm just assumed you're all um, <laughs> subscribed to Kate already. <laughs> but um, obviously Kate's channel will be linked down below. And you should go and check it out. And um, check out the other video we did together. Whenever it's up, I'm sure yes. I'll share the link. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Alright, uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to my channel, <laughs> and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye guys!